Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and in this video we are going to talk about spline IK bone constraint. Now this constraint can be a little bit difficult to understand. So do watch this video one or two times and also do experiment with yourself or you can follow along to understand this constraint. So let's get started. Now what spline IK does is it controls your bone with the help of curve. Now I'm just going to quickly add in a curve. I'll use a Bezier curve. Now let's make this point. Let's just delete that point and let's make this point go at the center. Um, let's select everything. Let's move it at the center. Now let's rotate it on the Y by 90 degree. Uh, and I guess that is the uh, reverse direction. I'll just scale it down a little bit like that. And now let's grab it on the Z like this. Now, as you can see, the arrows are upside down. By the way, if you don't see these arrows, just select your curve, go into the edit mode. And then over here, just turn on the normals like this. Uh, you can also the arrow length uh, of the normals over here. OK, so now, as you can see, one of the arrow is pointing downwards, which is because of it is rotated uh, in the opposite direction. Uh, so let's rotate it on the Y by 90 degree. Uh, I guess 180 degree not 90 so 180 degree like this uh, and over here uh, let's go to the wireframe mode so here as you can see it is also rotated weirdly so let's just rotate it by 180 degree like this so my arrows are now pointing from bottom to top so my curve is flowing from bottom to top like this for making it better for us to visualize let us turn on the names and axis uh, this is very optional without it your uh, constraint will work so now select your bone uh, by the way this is uh, like the worst case you could use for an IK but for understanding this constraint we will just use one bone for now I will add more bones later so let's just go into the bone constraint properties while we are in, in the pose mode and then let's add in the spline IK bone constraint like this now let's select the target curve like this but because you are in the pose mode you cannot select it like this so you have to select on the target and then select your bezier curve like that and you'll see that your bone is now stretching on the curve like the curve end and curve start if we uncheck the use curve radius uh, nothing happens because uh, use curve radius doesn't affect the y scale mode this is very independent use curve radius affects the x z scale mode so this option which we will look into later so the influence if you might have seen my previous videos of other constraints I this influence basically works the same for all the bone constraint if you make it zero uh, it's basically not having this uh, constraint at all um, with uh, one value uh, this constraint is turned on and with 0.5 or any other middle values it will basically act as a weight value like how much this constraint is affecting the bone so yeah if you have any uh, additional uh, constrained bone so this will act as a weight value so do keep that in mind uh, really handy influence uh, slider over there and then the chain length we will look into this when we have more uh, bones for now let's just uh, focus on chain scaling so why scale mode as you know that from head to tail uh, this direction is given by y axis so this is my bones local y axis if I make the constraint disable uh, you'll see that my y axis is pointing that way and it will always point that way so it doesn't matter where I rotate my bone, the Y axis is always going to point that way. So uh, my Y scale mode is right now set to fit curve, which means that it will try to scale Y such that my this bone, the constraint bone, it is now fitting the curve itself. Now, if I set it to bone original, then it will use the whatever in the edit mode, the scale of the bone was, it is going to use that. Now in the XY scale mode, it is set to none, which means that I, I can now uh, scale the bone on the Z and X. So if I try to do that, uh, wait, it is not scaling anymore. Um, so XY scale mode is set to none. Um, let's just do one thing. Let's change the it to bone original and let's try to scale it now. And as you can see that whenever I scale it on the Y, it is scaling the bone normally. That's good. And if I set it to none again, it is not scaling anymore. Uh, and now if I set it to inverse scale, okay, so now if I scale it on the Y, x and uh, z stays like that if i don't use original then as you can see that uh, if i scale my y bone like this 
my x and z they get smaller but if i scale it uh, like this my x and z gets bigger so uh, with inverse scaling you can if your y scales up this uh, other two axes they will scale down and inverse will happen and if i use bone original and if i scale it on the y uh, you'll see that that functionality is disabled right now but if i just uh, disable it again it is starting to work again so uh, basically use original scale it is like a toggleable thing between uh, if you want to use inverse scaling or not so volume preservation i guess you might know about this because we already talked about a constraint that preserves volume so if i scale this up nothing happens uh, but if i disable the use original scale and if i scale it up still nothing happens and now let's scale it on the y and uh, weird what's happening right now that's not how it should scale so actually when you scale it uh, on the y uh, the x and z as you can see x z scale mode they are preserving the volume itself and nothing actually happened when i changed this volume right now because uh, this is actually the initial stage so if i scale it on the y like this and if i scale it now you'll see that it is actually trying to preserve volume so now let's scale it down on the y like this and if i increase this you'll see that it is increasing its volume to like have more volume in it so right now this bone is trying to have 9.3 times more volume than itself and now it's uh, trying to have 0.9 volume so that's how it works now minimum and maximum volume uh, these are the settings uh, to set a minimum shrinkage and maximum shrinkage so if i set it to zero and set this to one the volume preservation won't go beyond that so if i scale it up like this again um, and as you can see it goes to zero um, now if i increase the zero you'll see that it will never go beyond the 0 0.1 limit and uh, yeah that's how it works um, so minimum and maximum uh, volume preservation you can set that and smoothness value just smooth it, smooths the transition between those two so that's how this works now i'll just reset the scale by pressing alt s and uh, that's how the volume preservation works if you choose to use original scale then it will try to preserve the volume uh, let me disable the minimum and maximum so now as you can see uh, if you use original scale then it basically like it technically uh, disables the x and z scaling so yeah this is kind of a toggle between uh, the bone original and volume preservation same goes with inverse scale if you turn this on and off it's basically xyz scaling between bone original and this so it's an easy way to just instead of going bone original you can just use this toggle pretty handy so i'll just make it none uh, let's reset the scale again and now uh, i might have confused you all with use curve radius uh, i'll talk about that now so in the use curve radius i then have to go a, into the edit mode of the curve itself and if i select this point of the curve and press alt s which is used to scale the bone uh, let me also go out of the x-ray mode okay and now press alt s you'll see that my bone is scaling right now uh, as we scale the curve itself and you can see that you have uh, scaled the curve with this arrows so the the curve over there is not scaled now let's go okay instead uh, let's just uh, do undoing that okay let's go back to the pose mode if i disable the use curve radius and let's go back into the edit mode of the curve alt s and as you can see it is not being affected by curve uh, radius anymore and now let's select the bone and let's go to the pose mode again so now let's fit it to the curve and there is also one more thing that i want to show you all let me select the curve again and now it doesn't when you have just one bone it doesn't matter which part of the curve you um Try, try to change the radius of uh, the whole bone will be affected but now let's go ahead and add some uh, length to our bone so let's uh, remove this to the original bone and now let's talk about the fitting section but for that we need to add more bones so let's just remove constraint from this and as you guys know that this uh, this constraint is actually an ik constraint so you will be needing to add it to okay i'm just going to uh, snap it to the end point of the uh, curve 
uh, it actually doesn't matter if you do that uh, i just like to do it anyways um, just an ocd thing so now uh, i made my bone that big now i'm just going to subdivide it a bunch of times okay there you go so now uh, suppose that this uh, uh, this chain length the the last bone is this one so usually in targets you use the last chain bone to have it assigned as a target bone and then that bone controls everything so same like that we are going to choose the last bone and then we are going to add a spline ik and inside the target we will select the our curve and now as you can see that that bone just got stretched uh, like nothing uh, and it is ignoring all the other bones but there is one thing that is chain length so now if i increase the chain by the way i think for this we should just make it bone original and as you can see the constrained bone just snapped on the ground over there so all you need to do now is increase the chain length and that bone will just get on top 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 like this until there is no limit okay so now as you can see that um, there is a relationship line a yellow relationship line over there and if i decrease it uh, you'll see that it is also decreasing um, so let's just make it a big number until it doesn't go down okay there you go so the uh, 10 chain length okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, get out of the pose mode select the curve go into the edit mode and select this point uh, i'll select this handle over there and i will move it like this and as you can see the bone is following all the bones are following the curve which is such a good effect if you just want to animate this uh, this curve line then it is super handy now this spline will make sure that your uh, transformation of the bones uh, is uh, very curvy <laughs> um, now let's go ahead and play with the chain length a little bit more now as you can see we can see the uh, relationship line a little bit more clearly so now if i decrease the chain length you'll see that the bones that are not affected by the chain length they just get to their original position so that's why you need to have them in the chain length i guess um, so get your chain length right now if i select even divisions you'll see that actually nothing is happening uh, and that is because uh, we need to set it to fit curve and uh, still you'll see that nothing is really happening a uh, chain offset we will talk about that soon but let's first talk about the even divisions so in the edit mode you'll see that all the bones they have equal length so if i just make this bone really small and let's uh, make this small so very random and each bone has a different uh, length you can say now every bone has a different length uh, and now if i go back to the object mode uh, let's just go into the pose mode uh, and let's select the constrained bone so if i disable the event division you'll see that the bone length which was in the edit mode is now set in the pose mode basically and if i click on event division you'll see that each bone is now scaled such that uh, their length is same uh, and if i now decrease the chain length as you can see every bone is now being scaled such that they are stretching uh, fully towards the curve so you can even stretch the bones with the curve if you want so that's what even division does let's talk about the chain offset so if i move my like if i select my armature and then if i move it you'll see that i cannot move it anymore if i want to do that then i can uh, or even if you like try to move the curve itself the whole armature is moving with the curve uh, and if you want to like uh, use the curve in a separate location and then uh, control the bones separately then what you can do is you can select the chain offset and then select your either curve or bones uh, most probably i will be moving my curve away if i want to uh, now as you can see that uh, uh, my bones and my curves they both are separated and if i go into the edit mode now this is much more easier to control because now i can select my curve really easily also there is one more trick that i will show you guys so if i select this and do control h new object like that and we can also do same control h new object and if i go into the object mode again 
and as you can see if i grab it uh you'll see that i can now control the both the sides of the curve but yeah that's how you use spline ik bone constraint now this is a really handy uh, when you have something like tails and you need to just animate uh, some uh, really uh, jello like or you can say um, smooth curve transitions so you can use this curve as your ik bone and control some tentacles and stuff like that uh, there is also one thing you can do is you can just uh, uh, use the bone and move them around so in the pose mode if i take this uh, actually you cannot control that bone anymore they are all controlled by ik bone and uh, yeah that's how this constraint works now if you learned something from this video and enjoyed it do subscribe like and share also i'm talking about all of these bone constraints in their each individual videos and all those videos are available in single playlist do check it out if you want to learn some more about rigging hope this video helped and it will help you in your future projects to support me more you can also check out my Kofi link uh, i upload project files over there which i think are useful for you guys to have and all those files are free also i have a discord channel so if you want some personalized help or if i am available i can help you all uh, in the discord server so do join the discord okay that's it uh, thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye